guys welcome back to my channel so after a long time we are here discussing a very important and important in day to day life practice and the topic is follicular monitoring uh, so in this video i am not going to discuss the why of follicular monitoring like why follicular monitoring why in three stages and so on and so forth i will not discuss the why i will discuss all these why's in second part of this follicular monitoring here i will discuss the just the basics what you need to report in the usg okay so uh, the very first thing that follicular monitoring is actually done in three phases in three phases the first is the baseline scan okay the baseline scan and this baseline scan is done on day 2 or 3 of menstrual cycle third or the second day of lmp okay so what we see in this second or third day we see the ovaries okay so uh, the general scanning the tvs is done Uh, like usual the uterus the ovaries so in the baseline scan what we see is the ovary and within the ovary there are follicles and in between there is this stroma so what we look for is the diameter of the ovary okay normally that should be between 2 to 3 cm next is the volume of the ovary normally that should be between 3 to 6.6 cc the number of follicles that is normally 5 to 12 antral follicle count per ovary okay what we see next is this stroma in this stroma what we see is the echogenicity that is usually isoechoic the vascularity that should be present the resistive index of the stromal vascularity that is normally 0.6 to 0.7 and the psv that is normally 5 to 10 cm per second so in this baseline scan we look for the ovary the diameter the volume the antral follicle count and the stroma in the stroma the echogenicity the vascularity the ri of the vascularity and the psv of the vascularity the why of this baseline scan that why baseline scan is necessary why this 5 to 12 count is necessary why this 6.6 cc is important all the questions of why we will discuss it in the second part okay so this is the baseline scan done on second or third day of last menstrual period okay so uh, the next phase is the pre or the peri ovulatory scan okay that is usually done 7 plus minus 1 that is or like uh, sorry 8 plus minus 1 that is like day 7 or day 8 or day 9 and then we call the patient the every other alternate day what we look in this pre peri ovulatory scan on every alternate day we look for the follicle within the ovary okay we look for the follicle and we look at the endometrium so in the follicle what we see is the size how to calculate the size it can be either given in two dimensions like the length and the width or it can be given as an average of length and width okay the size of the follicle then when we call the patient the next day we look for the growth rate of this follicle ideally it should be like 2 to 3 mm per day and we look for the vascularity around this follicle this vascularity should ideally cover the 3/4 of this growing follicle okay 3/4 vascularity is actually should be present in this peri follicular vascularity what we see is the ri and the psv of this peri follicular velocity the normal ri should be between 0.4 to 0.48 and the psv should be more than 10 cm per second okay so we look for the follicle the follicular size the follicular growth rate and the vascularity this vascularity should cover 3/4 ri this much psv this much this is the follicle other thing what we see in the pre peri ovulatory scan is the endometrium in the endometrium what we see is the thickness on the endometrium grade of the endometrium the vascularity of the endometrium the volume of the endometrium and the doppler indices the thickness usually achieved is like 6 to 7 mm ideal it is like 8 to 10 mm is the ideal one amongst the grade and the vascularity i'll discuss endometrial volume is calculated on 3d ultrasounds and amongst the doppler indices what we see is the PSV the PSV of the endometrial vascularity should be like more than 5 cm per second okay then this grade and vascularity so this is actually the three grades the three grades of endometrium uh, i think it's wise not to label it as as a b or c as sometimes they are interchanged or like you can give it in a descriptive form like type a is 
this picture is actually type A. Type A is entirely homogeneous hyperechogenic pattern. Okay, type B is like intermediate isoechoic pattern with reflectivity same as the myometrium, and type C is actually the triple line where there is an outer and central hyperechoic line and inner hypoechoic area. Okay, so this is actually A. This is B and sorry, this is C. The triple line this is type b and this is a so it's actually wise to uh, describe the grade of endometrium rather giving it is as a b or c okay uh, next thing is the endometrial vascularity zone and this endometrial vascularity zone is also divided into four uh, four zones of vascularity like in the zone a the vascularity is there in the myometrium only in grade B, it comes to the outer echogenic line of the endometrium. In C, it comes to the hypoechoic inner zone. And in D, it touches the central echogenic line as well. Okay. So, you have to mention the, the thickness. Like ideal is 8 to 10. The thickness. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the grade. A, like, like A, B or C. A, B or C. But better it is to describe the morphology triple line or like that the vascular zones like the zone a b c d okay zones then the volume and the doppler like psv should be more than five centimeter per second the why of everything we'll discuss in part two like why why it is important uh, to have the vascularity zones of endometrium in what zone the chances of pregnancy is higher okay why the ri and psv should be like more than 10 centimeter and ri should be lesser so we'll answer this wise in the second part okay and the third phase of follicular monitoring is actually post ovulation or secretory phase okay here we have to look for the signs of ovulation the signs of ovulation like here you have to look for the follicle okay here the follicle will suddenly disappear and corpus luteal cyst will appear so you have to look for corpus luteal cyst the ri of corpus luteal cyst is should be normally like 0 0.35 to 0.5 this is the ideal ri of a healthy corpus luteal cyst the next thing you look for is the endometrium like in the endometrium thickness rises then the grade becomes it like it becomes like hyperechoic throughout next is the vascular zone the volume and the doppler indices amongst the doppler the ri of the endometrium is like 0 0.48 to 0 0.52 in the post secretory phase okay and what we look is the uterine artery doppler the ri should be between 2 to 2.5 and what we look is pod fluid plus plus okay so these are the three basic phases of follicular monitoring the baseline scan done on second or third day the pre-pre or peri-ovulatory scan done seven days onwards and we ask the patient to come on every alternate day and the post ovulatory or the secretory phase where we look for the corpus luteum and the endometrial characteristics uh, so i think uh, this is the basic thing that you should know before uh, making the ultrasound report so uh, what we give in the ultrasound report is you have to give the date of examination then which day of menstrual cycle it is the right ovary the left ovary i as i have already said the size volume follicle count and all you have to give the dominant follicle size the endometrium you have to give the thickness grade then the vascularity then the volume and the ri doppler indices you have to give the pod fluid plus minus and then finally comment that whether it is a pre ovulatory phase this is the secretory phase okay um okay so and also you have to mention the lmp and the cycle duration of the patient like 28 day cycle for how many days there is and um, um, bleeding going on and whether the patient is having uh, this cycle as stimulated or normal cycle whether ovarian ovulation inducing drugs or triggering agents are given or not okay so uh, this is the thing you have to give in your uh, report and uh, that's it so uh, i think uh, i have made this clear i have made this topic clear and uh, i'll discuss the next thing in uh, part two of this video okay so thank you everyone